Before anyone writes even one line of code for a massive app, before a single server hums to life, there's a blueprint. And this blueprint, well, it's the most critical part of building huge digital structures. Today, we're gonna learn exactly how to draw it. Welcome to Cognito Key. I'm so happy you're here to join me as we unlock this really complex but super important topic together. I mean, really, have you ever stopped to think about it? How apps that are used by billions of people even get started? The sheer scale of it seems kind of impossible, right? But you know, just like a skyscraper, it all begins with a solid plan. And in the software world, that plan has a special name, system design. It's the architectural blueprint that developers create to make sure that whatever they build is strong, can grow, and won't just fall over. So let's start laying our foundation. Here's our game plan for today. First up, we'll figure out what system design actually is. Then we'll see what we can borrow from existing plans, sketch out our core structure, figure out our resources, and finally, pick the perfect architectural style for the job. So let's get right into it. What exactly is system design? You know, it really just boils down to one key difference, the difference between the what and the how. Think about it like this. You don't just say, let's build a car. You design an engine, a transmission, a body. All those are the subsystems. System design is just that. It's the process of breaking a huge idea into those smaller, manageable parts, and then figuring out how they all talk to each other and run on actual computers. And this is where you can see those two stages right next to each other. The analysis stage is all about the what. Something simple, like, we need a photo sharing feature. Easy enough. But system design, that's the how. How are we going to store billions of photos? How do we make sure they load in a split second for people all over the world? This is the crucial bridge that takes you from a cool idea to a real working plan. Okay, so you know what you want to do and how you want to do it. Where do you even begin? Well, a smart architect never ever starts with a completely blank page. The very first and smartest step is to see what you can reuse. This quote pretty much says it all, doesn't it? It's a core belief in modern engineering. I mean, why would you spend months building something from the ground up when brilliant tested solutions to common problems are already out there just waiting for you? So here's your reuse toolkit. Think of libraries as ready-made parts, like a pre-built engine you can just pop into your car. Frameworks are kind of like the car's whole chassis and body. The basic structure is all there. You just need to add your custom bits. And patterns? Well, they're like proven engineering tricks. You know, the best way to design a suspension, for example. Getting good with this toolkit is how you build things fast and build them right. With our toolkit ready, it's time to actually start drafting the core structure. This is where we decide how all the big chunks of our system are going to be organized, kind of like planning the different floors and wings of a brand new building. Basically, you can organize your system in two main ways. First, you have layers, which is a horizontal approach. Think of it like a building's floors. The foundation holds up the first floor, which holds up the second, and so on. The other way is with partitions, a vertical approach. These are more like separate independent pillars. The payment system and the user profile system stand side by side, each doing its own thing. Now, if you decide to go with layers, you've got another choice to make. A closed architecture is really strict. A layer can only talk to the one right below it. This is super organized and makes changes way easier to manage. An open architecture is more chilled out. A layer can talk to any layer below it. It's a classic trade-off, you know? Do you want things to be super organized and stable, or do you need more flexibility? So, we have the structure. Now it's time to get practical. We need to plan the building's utilities, you know, where the power comes from, how data is going to flow, and what happens in an emergency. We need safety nets. Making these resource decisions is absolutely crucial. You have to decide where your code is physically going to run. You have to pick the right way to store your data. Is a simple file okay, or do you need a massive, powerful database? And most importantly, you have to plan for what we call boundary conditions. What happens if the system fails? What happens when it first starts up? A truly great blueprint thinks about these stressful moments ahead of time. We're at the last big decision for our blueprint. We need to choose the overall architectural style. This is what's going to define the entire personality of our system, how it behaves, and what it's really good at. The style you choose totally depends on the problem you're trying to solve. A batch style is for crunching huge amounts of data all at once, like how a bank processes all its reports at the end of the day. 
An interactive style is what you see on social media. It has to react to your clicks and swipes instantly. A system where lives are at stake, like in an airplane, needs a real-time style where every single millisecond is critical. And of course, a banking app uses a transaction manager to make sure two people can't take out the same money at the exact same time. So let's pull all of that together with a quick checklist for our blueprint. First, always remember, system design is the how, not the what. Always, always start by seeing what you can reuse. Decide on a clear structure, either layers or partitions. Plan carefully for your resources and for when things go wrong. And finally, pick an architectural style that is made for what you're trying to achieve. And there you have it, the basic way of thinking like a system architect. We've laid out the tools and all the key decisions. So I'll just leave you with this question. Now that you have the blueprint, what's the first system you would start to design? If we helped unlock the world of system design for you, please do give this explainer a like and share it with someone who you think might be curious. And of course, be sure to subscribe to Cognito Key so we can keep unlocking more complex topics just like this together. Thanks for watching.